Hi everyone, this is Sean Dyer coming to you today as a Civil War surgeon, or at least representing So I am not a doctor, I'm actually a high school social studies teacher, teach U.S. social studies and U.S. government. But I do this on the weekends when I can, and I have a lot of fun with it. I've done a lot of research and reading about it, but I can always learn more. And if you do have a medical professional background, um, if I say something wrong or if I uh, point out something that is not 100% accurate, please let me know. And I would gladly uh, admit my fault and change it. But this is what I know and understand to be true, especially in the historical context, not so much in the contemporary, but a historical context. And that's important to realize that what we know today is drastically different than what our or what our predecessors knew in the medical field. So what is a pocket kit? A pocket kit is, like I said, something that a surgeon would keep on their person, keep close by, and it would be a very personal assortment of instruments that could handle most of the emergencies, uh, medical situations that a doctor would come into contact with. Um, there's a, a book, a memoir by Dr. Brenton, who was uh, General Grant's personal surgeon in the West. And he was talking about going out on a patrol and he got uh, completely soaked. The rain came down really heavy. And when he went to reach for his pocket kit that was in his chest pocket, he tried to pull out and the kit, which is made out of leather, just literally fell apart, melted away. Um, this is important to note because this goes to show that uh, a surgeon would keep on him just as much as he would keep like a cravat or vest, jacket or shirt. Uh, it was something that he would keep on his person at all times in case of an emergency. Now the pocket kit that I'm going to show you is based on an original that I personally have. The original I personally have is a uh, George Tymon pocket kit. And this one was made in the 1830s. And we know that based off of the stamp. Now, the pocket kit is very small. It's very brittle, for as old as it is, even though I put um, some uh, conditioner on it to try to keep it together. I believe it is pigskin. There were, um, the traditional case was made out of Moroccan. Now, what we know is Moroccan leather today is a little bit different than what it was historically. But this was called a fine Moroccan leather case um, and it has silver clasps on it uh, which is you know, keeps it closed but it's a, a sign of, of status you know silver is a little bit more pricier than say pewter uh, certainly better than tin or various other metals so silver definitely denotes the the class level of what we're looking at here the one that I reproduce is here. It does not have a silver clasp because I cannot find a silver clasp to reproduce on it. So I have a little brass button that I use to enclose it. So all these instruments that I have are completely original. And I'm going to go, um, I don't know if I'll be able to have time to go through one on one. I'm going to try to do it very quickly and we'll see how this goes. All of these instruments that are the dark handle are made out of tortoise shell. Uh, this right here is called a tenaculum. Now, a tenaculum is used to pull out the um, fibrous tissues. It's really small that you can't get with your fingers, um, arteries, veins, etc., so that you can pull them, tie a ligature around them, and handle them. This next thing I have here is called a gum lancet. Now, a gum lancet looks kind of like a little axe, and any lancet that you, you could use to get into a tight spot and then you need to make a small incision, this would be pretty useful. But a gum lancet is called gum lancet because it was primarily used for oral surgery. The next instrument I have is a pair of scissors. Now, this pair of scissors is uh, pretty rare, hard to find, and unique, um, and it has the open holes in it so you can get your fingers in and out rather easily. This next instrument, again, is a tube instrument, so a safe space. I have a small scalpel or lancet, 
and I have a pointed bestuary. Now the pointed bestuary is curved, so you could be very precise about where you angle it and cut it either up or from the bottom. This little piece here is rather unique. It's called a, um, a caustic holder. Now the caustic holder would have had and kept inside of it a stick with uh, some silver nitrate on it. Now silver nitrate was used to basically cauterize through a chemical reaction of silver nitrate whenever it gets wet. Um, anything that's bleeding to stop bleeding. Now we still use silver nitrate today. If you have a problem with bloody noses, you might go to the doctor and the doctor might use silver nitrate to cauterize the blood vessels. That way you don't have um, bleeding all the time, bloody nose. This right here is called an aneurysm needle. It is curved, it is blunted, it is, has an ivory handle. The aneurysm needle was curved so you could get behind um, aneurysms, right? And you can tie a ligature around it. I have various silver probes. Now, these probes have a little loop on it, so you could use it um, to pass through. You can tie a little cord or cloth in the eyelet um, and use it to uh, mostly use it for draining, if in this case, in this situation. But the probe can be used to identify where things are. You can also use it to uh, for patients and their feelings. Can you feel that? Do you feel this? Which leads me to my next point. So this is a probing needle, also has an ivory handle on it. Now the probing needle, just like before, is to poke and prod. You can use it as a probe, but it could cause damage since it's not blunted, it is pointed, to see if patients can feel certain things. So it's an exploratory needle. This next one I have here is called a hydrocele trocar. Now in it, I have a very fine needle and in the top, this little doohickey, I have various little tiny tubes. Now the tube would go over the very sharp and pointed trocar, which I already have one on there, and you would, um, Poke, I shouldn't say poke, I guess, uh, you would insert the trocar into an area that might have some pus or you need to relieve pressure. And once you put it in there, you would pull it out, leave this little tube inside, and that would drain. All these little tubes are made out of silver. They use a lot of instruments. Made out of silver because your body doesn't react with it, and um, the silver also doesn't like rust or get nasty. This is made out of silver. This has got two ends. This is an a cannula, a little scoop, and it has a little groove here, and that's called a director. So you can put very precisely where you want your instrument, and you would use the groove to direct what you want to cut. Next instrument I have here. This is called a tenotome. It's a very, very small, fine blade. And here I have another type of needle and it has a very, very fine groove in it that can also be used as a director for smaller areas. So you saw my small scalpel, this is my larger scalpel to make longer and uh, incisions where you don't have to worry so much about space. Now there are several different types of uh, what we call tweezers today, but they're called um, forceps in the medical profession. Now this one here, has little teeth in there. That way you can grab a hold of arteries and tissue 
and it holds onto it rather well. And it also has a locking mechanism. That way, once you have it, it stays closed. These are my standard forceps. Now, what's different from the historical forceps versus um, forceps that we have today, the forceps before the 1890s, when we really understood germ theory a little bit more, um, they didn't have the lock in this area or down here. Uh, so if you want it to, to be held, you just had to hold it. Um, it does have a little scoop on the inside of it to grab whatever it needs to, and it has little ridges or teeth. I don't think you'll be able to see it in the video, but um, that could be used to grab tissue. It could be used to take a sponge and put it in the area that you need it. Um, it it's because it is scooped, you could even grab uh, rounded objects, like a bullet or ball, um, a piece of splinter, uh, etc. Now this is probably one of my rarest instruments that I have, and it's in exceptional condition for its age. This is called a Seton needle. Now many people think that Civil War medicine, um, you know, we're still bleeding. We are to an extent, but it's going out of vogue. We understand that bleeding is really not doing a whole lot of good. However, even today, we still use Seton needles. It's a very, very very thin, as you can see, uh, blade. It's very pointy, it's very sharp, and it does have a little eyelet on there. Now, a Seton needle would have been used to take a piece of cord or very, very fine fabric and put it through the eyelet, and you would pass it underneath, pull it out, and the surgeon wouldn't just leave this dangle, he would take that, but the cord have been left in the area that needed to be drained. And um, as time went on, the surgeon could decide, is it, does it need to be a bigger cord or a smaller cord, um, and adjust accordingly to facilitate the drainage of the pus or bleeding, if you're still believing in it, um, and handle the situation accordingly. We still use seat needles today, like I said, uh, usually in areas where there's a lot of bacteria. Um, so this doctor needs to control the healing process. Now, I do have a little pocket back here. Now, in my little pocket, I have um, deer skin. This is actually an original one, um, my surgical needles. So that's where you would keep your sutures and your needles um, to, well, sew someone up. And last but not least, something that I haven't talked about, but is very important, especially when we talk about Civil War medicine, is the need for, I wonder if any of you know what this is, do, 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 do. as we keep screwing it on, this is made out of silver, and for soldiers <laughs> and men, um, most of the problems that we had at the time of the Civil War, had to do with our bowels. Um, you know, sickness actually killed two thirds, disease killed two thirds of the soldiers in the entire Civil War on both sides. Um, this is what's called a catheter. And this is a male catheter. A female catheter would have been much shorter because you wouldn't need to get into the prostate like the males. It does have a little hole in it, and this facilitates the drainage that you need. Um, but it also helps the doctor uh, use the other end to inject whatever they may need to cure various things like um, uh, STDs. So uh, here you go. This is my male catheter. It unscrews. It's portable. Would have been pretty much every surgeon on the field would have carried one of these. Um, and if nothing else, if they didn't have an STD, they would still... Uh, might need to have help urinating and draining themselves. So without further ado, that is my very first video. It is about the surgeon's pocket kit. I hope you find it informative. If you have any specific questions um, on one of the specific instruments that I can go in more detail, I'd be happy to, but I'm actually running out of time. Um, so please let me know what you think, and I'm always happy to get any suggestions. Again, Thank you for joining me. I hope everybody's doing well. Stay home, stay safe, enjoy this time with your loved ones.
Take care, everybody.